Imagine what it must have been like after dark on the farms, ranches, and small towns of northeast Louisiana more than 75 years ago. Before there was power, before there was the convenience of electricity. Life was hard and unyielding. Most chores done by hand without the benefit of electric pumps, electric appliances, and electric lighting. You didn't take a lot of baths back then. I don't know. Nowadays, a fella got to have one every day. You didn't do that back when you had to heat your water on a... We finally got up to a coal oil stove. Used to be a wood one. Then the coal oil. So you'd have to heat your water in that... Uh, and on the stove. And then you had a number three bathtub, which you took your bath in. Mm -hmm. And you poured your water in that. If you didn't heat it on the stove, you had to set it outside and let the sun heat it up for you. In the wintertime, you didn't take many baths. You didn't, didn't have electricity, so you had to wait on your customers with a coal oil lamp after it got began to get dark. And we had a Coke box in there. It was a, just an ice box. It wasn't a cooler. And it, uh, your man had come three times a week and put you a block of ice in the, the Coke box. Then you had cold Cokes to let block of ice melt. And you'd get out there and you'd pump it up and you had a big glass up that would hold 10 gallons. And a man wanted a gallon, you let him have it. If he wanted th three gallons, you, you just measured it and you washed it as you come down. And that was the only way you could get, get the gas out of the ground. But things were about to change after Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed an executive order creating the REA. All across rural America, farmers, ranchers, families, and local businesses banded together to begin a movement that would bring light to the countryside. Included in that movement was the creation of Northeast Louisiana Power Cooperative, born out of the spirit of determined, independent-minded people right here in our own community. People who understood the great possibilities that can be realized by working together, who had the courage and the vision to do what the large power companies refused to do. Come out of service. I started here the third of third uh, of March, forty-seven. But it, but in here it was tough. We had to you know stake the line, cut the right away, dig the hole, set the pole, and if we couldn't drive down the road and read a while, we truck, we had to pull it. We, back then we run we set the on switches in the houses. Myself, I said, Mr. Holiday's play pretty. We, all we had to start with is an A-frame truck, hauled a pole on, on the top, had a, had a trailer, and the trailer had a, the tongue had a bow in it, the trailer would go down the road sideways. It was, it looked like a poor boy rig, but anyhow, we come out on top. We, uh, we were in a guy in that step station at Bastard, out there. <clears throat> and Joe Pebble was up in the bucket truck. He would operate. I said, you, you operate, let me go over and make this connection. Whenever we tried to make that connection, the whole world caught on fire. And if I had that on my safety glass, I'd have been blind today. But it got some frost on my arm above my rubber glove. All across America, lights came to thousands of farms, towns, and villages and along with it, all the conveniences of modern life and the promise of economic growth and prosperity. The effect was so powerful that in 1940, a man sitting in a pew in a small rural church was moved to say, brothers and sisters, 
I want to tell you two things. The greatest thing in the world is to have God in your heart. And the second greatest thing on earth is to have electricity in your home. It was great to, to get a little electricity. And the lights back then, you had a little green cord. It was twisted. Come down and you had a little light you turned on or you pulled a chain or you'd push a button. But uh, there wasn't... There weren't any fancy fixtures like they are now, but you could see with them it was better than a coal oil lamp. In 49, in, uh, it was in February during Mardi Gras time, Kale got us to take a truck and, and me and him went down to New Orleans to pick up some Kelvinator refrigerator. So we went down and picked up, I don't know how many it was, but it's a pretty good truck load. It's a bobtail truck. And uh, so he let us have one. So that was the first refrigerator we had in the house. From its earliest days, Northeast Louisiana Power has grown right along with the community. Locally owned and locally controlled by its members, your cooperative is an integral part of this community which it serves, providing local jobs, participating in local charities and civic groups, supporting education, promoting the safe and efficient use of electricity, and paving the way for economic growth and future development. Graduated high school in 1951, went nine months to business, finished business school, and came here, and this is my only job that I ever worked at. The greatest challenge was the first time we went on computer. That was a lot of hard work and lots of information we had to get together. It was like starting all over again. You verified all memberships, uh, set all that up. It took us a time to get used to the system, but you had lots more information for the customers and for the company. So we've been blessed that we was on the co-op uh, Northeast Power. They have been super, super good about keeping us electricity out here. They have come at different times and that pole down yonder in the, on this side of the river, that's a 65 foot pole. And we watched them climb that thing when the lightning was just flashing. It was just like a light. You could just watch the man climb up there to, to get us power back on. Up there at Crowville at Longview, the energy left them folks off up there at that store. They had to throw all of their frozen foods away, all of the ice cream and, and all this. They, they just take forever. They don't work like the co-op folks do. I met my husband when we were both working at the co-op. So that day I was sitting by the window back there and he told Catherine, he was a friend of hers, that he wanted to meet me. And he told his mother, he said, I met the girl today I'm going to marry. She said, well, son, did you ask her? He said, no, mother, I had him out of date. My best memories working at the co-op was the people. I still miss everybody. And we'll always love the co-op. It's a lot of blessing that the co-op come in, come in the country. Because they had to be in. Some of them wouldn't have like 50 now. Over the past 75 years of service to its members, Northeast Louisiana Power has overcome the challenges brought by storms, economic slumps, and predatory corporations, which have all threatened to undermine this community organization. Yet your cooperative continues to stand tall.
Your cooperative is guided by the fundamental principles of democratic control, quality service, and fiscal responsibility. These are the principles upon which your cooperative was founded, and these are the principles that will be in place during the next 75 years. We appreciate the loyalty and dedication demonstrated by our members through the decades, and we consider it the highest honor and privilege to continue serving you.